What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to create and configure custom cells for your collection view. So we're going to be putting together what you see here, which is a obviously a collection view and each of these are custom cells with our own image, our own label. We'll talk about laying everything out and also how to configure dynamic content in each cell. So that said, make sure you destroy the like button as always to support the channel, get Xcode ready, get excited, and let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. In addition, to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with a single view application here and I'm gonna go ahead and call this collection view custom cell. Go ahead and hit enter twice to create and save your project. And first things first, we are going to select a simulator from this drop down up here. And I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the one that I've got open already, which is this 11 Pro Max here. Hit that run button to launch it. So uh, my simulator is in dark mode here, but we can hit command shift A on it and we can switch back to light mode. And before we actually go ahead and create a custom cell, we probably wanna set up a collection view. Uh, so go ahead and go to your view controller and we're gonna set up a collection view here. So let's see, we're gonna create a private var and it's gonna be a collection view, collection, whoops, private var collection view of type UI collection view optional. The reason we want optional is because we are going to uh, change some things using self, a reference to self, and we can't refer to self out here. So you guys will see that in just a second. So let's go ahead and create a collection view, open up the initializer, and we want the one with two parameters. For the frame, we're gonna say zero. And for the layout, we're gonna say it is a layout. And let's go ahead and create this layout up here. The layout is going to be a UI collection view flow layout. And let's see, on the layout, we want to set a couple properties. But the first thing we're going to set on here before we get into the other properties is scroll direction. And we're going to say it's vertical. And we're going to come back to this, the layout, in just a bit. But we now want to add the collection view as a sub view. So before we can do that, we need to unwrap it since the type of it is collection view optional. So we're gonna say guard let right above this. Uh, in the else case will return if it's not optional, it should never be optional because we're assigning it right here. And let's see, what else do we want to do? We also wanna set the collection views data source and we'll also do its delegate. And like any cell for a collection view, we wanna register it. So we're gonna say a collection view and we're going to register a cell for a cell uh, reuse identifier and we're going to register a standard UI collection view UI collection view cell dot self for the ID of cell. So the reason we have two errors down here is because we're not conforming to these protocols yet. So up here let's add a comma and say UI collection view delegate and UI collection view data source. And there are two functions that are required uh, per the data source. So we can actually add them ourselves or if you hit the little error that pops up, you can hit this fix button and it'll bring them in for you. So we're gonna be lazy and do that. So I'm gonna move them down here just so things are a little more organized. So the first thing we wanna do in here is return the number of items uh, let's go ahead and return, let's do 30. And in this one, we actually need to dequeue the cell from the collection view and return it. So we're gonna dequeue a reusable cell with an identifier for the index path. 
Now this identifier is coming from the ID we use to register the actual cell right up there. And let's go ahead, whoops. Let's go ahead, this is index path, and return the cell right here. And just so we can see the cells, let's go ahead and say cell uh, dot content view dot background color. And we're gonna say it is system blue. And the last thing we wanna do before we can run it and see the collection view is set the collection views frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and set it to be the entirety of the screen. So go ahead and assign it to view.bounds. Hit that command R button and we should see our collection view now. So we see this collection view, we don't have a background, we see our 30 cells and they're all blue. So looking pretty good. So let's see how we can create a custom cell. So first things first, you can either create it with a storyboard in a class or just a class. So I'm gonna create it only in code. I have another video showing how to create it with code plus a storyboard, a nib. So to start off, we're gonna click this and create a new file. We're gonna select a Cocoa Touch class and we want a subview of a UI collection view cell. And I'm gonna go ahead and call it custom collection view cell. Make sure this is not checked and make sure the language is Swift, Swift of course. Go ahead and create it. And you're gonna get this empty uh, class here. The first thing we're gonna do is create a static let on here, which is a constant. And that's gonna be an identifier. This is what we're gonna to use to register the cell. Next up, we want to override the initializer, which is init with frame. And go ahead and call super init with frame. And you're gonna see an error pop up here because we need to bring in some other required code. You can just hit the error, then click on fix and it'll bring it in. And for now, let's just go ahead and set the content views background color in here to be uh, system red. So cool, how do we actually use this now? So this is technically, well, rather not technically, this is a custom cell. We just, we're gonna configure it more, but basically here in our controller, we can now register instead of the uh, basic UI collection view cell, we're gonna register our custom collection view dot self. And the ID is gonna be our cell name dot identifier. And again, this is the identifier we just added right here. And before we run it, we need to change one more thing. And that's in this function, which is uh, cell for item. We just wanna want, we wanna make sure we go ahead and change the identifier to our custom uh, class name over here, dot identifier. Let me go ahead and expand this a little bit so we have more room to see our code. Let's go ahead and hit command R now and we should see that every single one of these is red. The reason it's blue is because we're overriding it right there, but they all should be red. And the place red is coming from is we're using this custom cell here. So cool. So what if we wanna customize it further, which we in fact do, and let's say we wanna add like an image and maybe like a label below it. So we wanna add two sub views to this collection view cell. So we're gonna say private let uh, my image view, and this is gonna be of type UI image view. And we're gonna create that image view in this following pattern, which is known as a uh, anonymous closure. Go ahead and return it right there. And let's say it's image. We're just gonna set a standard image in here is UI image. We're gonna use one of the system images and we're gonna use a house, which is like a home icon. And we also wanna create a label. So go ahead and copy and paste that and make this my label. Change the type to a UI label. UI label right there. Label, label, and label. We're gonna change the labels text to be, we'll just call it custom. And let's see, what else do we want to do? Let's, we want to add these as sub views now. So in the init function, you wanna say content view, add sub view, and you wanna say my label, and you want another one for the my image view. And the most important piece that I would say is we wanna assign frames to this uh, image view and label. So let's actually set a background color to these so we can actually see them once we render so we can see if the framing looks correct. So for the label, we'll say the background color is green. And for the image view, we'll say the background color on this guy is yellow, nice and bright. 
And the last function we need to implement in here to assign the frames is layout subviews. And we want to say super layout subviews. And in here, this is where we assign the frame for our image and our label in each cell. So we inherently know the height and width of each uh, table view cell. So what we want to do is for the my label, we're going to set its frame first. It's going to be a CG rect. We're going to say it's five from the left. The height is going to be the content view, which is the entirety of this cell's content view. Frame size height, subtracting 50, which implies our height of this label is 50. And the width is going to be the entirety of the width, subtracting 10. And we're getting 10 because we're saying that this is 5 from the left. So we also want to give 5 uh, pixel buffer from the right-hand side. So let me go ahead and line break this. Now let's copy and paste this for the image. Let's change this to my image view. And the X in this case will also keep at five. For the Y, let's go ahead and make this zero. The width isn't gonna change, but the height is. The height's gonna be the entirety of the content view's height subtracting 50. And it's subtracting 50, so it doesn't overflow and overlap our label. So that said, let's go ahead and hit Command R. Let's see what we get. All right, so look at that. So we have our uh, custom label showing, but we don't actually, in fact, have our image showing. And the reason is, is because these cells are too small, right? So how do we change up the cell size? And that's the layout bit that I was getting at earlier that we can talk about now. So on this layout that we create right here, that we create our collection view with, we can specify an item size. And an item size is a width and a height. And let's say we want a grid of three by three. So we're gonna say the item size is the view, it's width divided by three, and we want each cell to be a square. So we're gonna save that for the height as well. And if you go ahead and hit run, there's gonna be an issue. Well, first thing you notice is we see our image now, we see the label, but we don't actually have a three by three. The reason we don't have a three by three grid is because we are essentially, uh, we're using the default spacing horizontally uh, and vertically. So we wanna go ahead and change that and make it our own. So we're gonna say layout, and there's two properties we wanna assign. The first one is minimum line spacing. We'll say that's one. And the next one is minimum item inter spacing, which is one as well. And we're gonna change this to be divided by three subtracting four. Now where's four coming from? Four is the amount of padding between the total of the horizontal and vertical spacing. So this is how you would get a three by three uh, column and this is how you would configure a custom cell fully through your code. So let's go ahead and change uh, two more things to make it look a little nicer. First thing you'll notice is the image looks a little distorted. Uh, that's because I think it is. And we also probably want to center our uh, label here. So let's go ahead and say the text alignment on this is centered. And on our image view, we're gonna say uh, content mode is scale aspect fit. And let's see, we also don't want the image view to overflow. So we're gonna say clips to bounds is true. And we never want our cell to overflow either. So we're gonna say content view clips to bound is true. Go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. And now it's looking much better. So we got our custom cell sizes, we got our image. We can actually get rid of the background color for uh, the label and the image here since the positioning is correct now. So let's get rid of this guy and let's also get rid of this guy. And let's run it. All right, looking good. Uh, so the last thing before we actually wrap up is what if you want to configure this with a different uh, different label for each cell? So the way you would do that is actually very, very simple. So on your cell, you would create a public function called configure, and we can call this configure with a label, which is a string. And in here, you would just say my label dot text is your label. And because this is going to be uh, different in each cell. We also want to implement prepare for reuse, 
which is basically going to reset each cell when it's dequeued by the table view. I will say my label dot text is nil. Now back in our view controller here, we can actually call that configure function. But if we try to say cell dot configure, you'll notice it doesn't pop up. The reason it doesn't pop up is because we need to cast this cell as our custom cell. And now the functions on it become available to us. So now you can see there is this configure and the label we'll pass in is custom. And we're just gonna bring in the, in this string, the current item position, which is index path dot row. Go ahead and hit command R to build and run. And now what you can see is every single label is different. You can of course do that for the image as well, which I won't go over here since it's pretty much verbatim the same. And there you have it. That's how you can create and configure custom cells in your collection view. So if you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit that like button. Helps me make more videos for all of you and it really supports the channel. Subscribe if you found the video helpful and if you wanna see more daily Swift content. If you got any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.